Have you ever touched a single atom? Other than with poetry, obviously. Well, IBM have, and in 1989, they managed to use them to write out their own name. And just last year, they even managed to produce a short film using individual atoms. Neat, right? Since physics has branched out into this atomic regime, this nano world, physicists have needed to create a new set of tools in order to probe this domain. So I thought it might be interesting to do sort of a mini series on the various techniques that we've come up with in order to look at things closely at this size range. Today, let's take a look at the Atomic Force Microscope, the AFM. The AFM is a cool device because it allows you to gain a really intricate view of the surface of a material. It does this by descending what's almost like a small antenna down onto the surface and feeling for the contours of the individual atoms. So let's see how one works. It's time to get our hands dirty in the clean room. Yay, we made it. Um, so there might be a lot of background noise and that's because we're in a clean room, so there are big fans that are constantly trying to filter out the particles from the air. Um, so just try and ignore it, I apologize. But behind me is the AFM. Uh, it's in that big black box, so let's open it up and see how it works. The main attraction of this microscope is its surprising simplicity. All that happens is a laser illuminates an incredibly small antenna-like probe called a cantilever, which scrapes along the surface of the material, feeling for atoms. The laser reflects off the back of the cantilever and hits a detector which has been split into four parts, kind of like a four-paned window. As the cantilever moves up and down over the atoms, the laser is reflected at different angles, so it hits different parts of the detector, so we can track its movement. Simple as that. So if you want to feel around at the atomic level, obviously you need something small, something really small. Uh, what we refer to this as is the cantilever, but basically it's just a glorified finger, but a finger that's atomically small. And we can use it just to touch very gently the surface that we want to study, and we can sort of resolve the atomic structure that must be going on underneath. Uh, so let's take this one apart really gently and have a look at it under the microscope. As we look at it under the microscope, it's interesting to note the absolutely massive size of the tweezers when compared to the cantilever. And this part is actually the cantilever substrate, it's the thing that holds the cantilever. The actual cantilever itself is this very fine tip at the end. It's still pretty hard to see, so let's switch to an image taken by an electron microscope. The cantilever itself is about 100 microns long, which is round about half the width of a human hair. So small, but unfortunately not small enough if we want to look at atoms. Which is why at the end of our little finger is a 10 micron long tip, equivalent to, say, the poo of a meagre dust mite. But the thing about this second little finger is that it's really sharp, and at the tip it actually comes to a peak which is about 10 nanometers wide, matching the thickness of a cell membrane. With this tip, we're able to feel the grooves and contours of individual atoms, touching only a single atom at a time as we scan over an area. I think it's absolutely amazing that human beings, big smelly human beings, were able to make something so fine and so precise that it can mechanically interact with individual atoms. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. We've actually managed to build something that at the very, very finest tip of it, can probe the atomic scale. The final thing I thought might be interesting to do was I brought a penny in and I was gonna scan an image of the queen's head and see if we could maybe see like a close up of her eyeball or nose or something. But then I realized that the actual scan size you look at is only about between one and 10 microns wide. So the area that we'd actually be scanning would be less likely to resolve some feature of the queen's face like her eye or her nose or something and what we'd be actually looking at, if we looked at this size, would be the individual intricacies of her nose hairs. I'd like to take this time to apologize to Her Majesty, and I hope you brought a tissue. Sorry, Your Majesty. As a substitute, here's some other images I thought you might find interesting. Well, 
Well, I hope you found this interesting. I would like to thank NSQI, obviously, for letting me do this. Those guys are awesome. And also, I would probably should thank security because in trying to film this today, I set off pretty much every alarm in the building twice. If you like my videos, then please subscribe to my channel. I try and put out something every weekend. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. And have a lovely week, and I will see you next week. Bye. 1989, they were even able to spell out their own name using individual atoms. And last year, they were even able to produce a film using individual atoms. <laughs>